Urban Meyer is a fraud, but he's just too elusive to maintain any pose for long. His issue with the Jacksonville Jaguars appears to be one of tone, as he can't seem to find one that is sincere. Myers has already had to address his team three times over various mismanagement issues. However, you can never blame him for poor performer or internal strife. He's not as filthy as his white lies suggest. Myers' harsh classification of players as winners or losers in training camp, as well as his arrogant declaration that every man has a record, made it clear that he misunderstood what it takes to lead the NFL. As close as a grackle is to an attack helicopter, he's a legitimate NFL head coach. The difference between professional athletes and the worshipful, spaniel-eyed teenagers Myers yelled at in college is that top NFL players are nearly difficult to influence with deceptive or counterfeit phrases. The truth is what makes or breaks their performance. Myers is a liar and no one believes what he says. He's 2'11 at the time of this recording, and he quit his team after a loss to go bar hopping. And he doesn't seem to know which of his players rotate in and out of the game or why. Cisco is playing a little bit more, I believe, Meyer said after the game when asked if safety Andro Cisco will see more action. I don't have his contact information in front of me, but actually on that Sunday, Cisco did not play a single defensive play against the Tennessee Titans. And it became clear why the Jaguars staff is leaking like an oil spill, with stories about Meyer's shallow conceits and over the top incompetence at that point. Myers has been spouting airy platitudes with as much depth as a young adult novel since he pulled off a TV screen by Jaguars owner Shad Khan. At Ohio State in Florida, he could get away with it because administration prepared to overlook his mismanagement scandals, including the Gators' 31 arrests and the Buckeyes' coddling of an alleged domestic abuser on his staff. He attracted outstanding individuals, took advantage of several mismatches, and cloaked everything in organizational jargon. But it's become evident that he has no idea what it's like to be an elite competitive character in the actual world. Never forget that he benched Joe Burrow in favor of Dwayne Haskins, declaring Haskins the can't-miss quarterback prospect. Consider yourself a veteran in this locker room, listening to his froth about a plus two mentality. You would be wondering what a plus two mentality is. Maya responded, if we ask you to go 10, go 12. Give us seven reps when we ask for five. It's just a way of looking at things. Actually, it's just a blustering technique. Hear how that must sound to Malcolm Brown, a seven-year veteran defensive tackle who spent four years with the champion New England Patriots under Bill Belichick and two more with Sean Payton's New Orleans Saints. And now you must listen to this charlatan. Consider Jacob Hollister, the tight end who made the Patriots roster as an undrafted free agent, and then went on to play in the playoffs with the Seattle Seahawks and Pete Carroll. Or ride receiver Taven Austin, who has worked for both the Los Angeles Rams and the Green Bay Packers under Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur. For example, Bruce Arians elevated Jaden McKins off his practice squad to earn a ring with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. Do you really want these people to give you another two reps? Do you want them to raise their thinking to meet your higher bar? Myers appears to be unaware that his locker room is already crowded by overachievers with irrational mindsets. Every man on the practice field is part of the 1.6 percent of players who made the transition from NCAA to NFL by going above and beyond. They play in the league where injuries are common and their contracts aren't guaranteed. Here's what Myers knows about high-level performers. He hit a .182 as a baseball farmhand before enrolling as a walk-on at the University of Cincinnati in 1985, where he made exactly two tackles. Good NFL coaches start conversations with the assumption that their players already want to be great, and that if their effort flags, it's usually due to terrible working conditions or a boss they don't trust. The term locker room talk is synonymous with crudeness, and there's no denying it. However, with a championship NFL organization, the conversational tone is sophisticated as well, and the best NFL coaches express the truth in a language of diagnosis and distinction rather than excessive recrimination or blame shifting. Above all, they recognize that the best performances are based on a mutual belief in one other's work rather than on demand. If Myers has lost the Jaguars' locker room, which looks to be the case, it may be because he ran it with a level of disregard for the professionals who work there. He wants an extra two reps and then retires to a bar for the evening. He preaches personal responsibility, but then avoids doing it himself. 
I'm very demanding of our coaches, he stated Sunday, and I expect guys to be held accountable for their positions. As if he's the only obnoxious person in the building. As if he's the only one with morals. It's no surprise that the contempt has become completely reciprocal. Well guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to Sporting, and ring the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching.